for those of you who are interested in in this panel, please join us. Um, my name is Christian Ebner. I work for the Austrian Cultural Forum here in New York. At this stage, we usually show a video which makes a lot of noise and, and catches everybody's attention. Uh, but I'm, I, I understand there's a few people in the audience and we just uh, go ahead and, and hope that uh, the room will, will be uh, filling up a, as we speak. Um, I hope you're not too disappointed if you look at this program. Uh, there's an announcement of the Spanish bestseller Manuel Dorero and the translator Pamela Carmel obviously talking about zombie movies. Obviously, that's not us. That's a misprint here, uh, I, I understand. Uh, but the good news is that uh, there's also European literature we're going to address this morning. Uh, thanks to Wes Anderson and, and George Prochnik and, and others, and the New York Times, if you read it the other day, Austrian literature is, so to say, en vogue again with Stefan Zweig. We are talking uh, today more about contemporary Austrian literature. And the other good news is that uh, we are going to offer something for translators, which, which is for free. And that's why I'm very honored and, and privileged that Damien Searles is joining us this morning. Uh, I thought I would say a few words uh, about the Austrian Cultural Forum. First, then uh, explain very simply, the, the prize, the $5,000 prize that we are about to launch, and then have a few questions to Damien, who is here in his capacity as a jury member, and gratefully, he was the most recent recipient of the Austrian Culture Forum's prize in, in 2011, and he, he uh, agreed to sit on this jury for, for this session in 2014-2015. In He's also an author and, and uh, most importantly, he's, he's, he's a translator. Um, for those of you, maybe I ask the, the audience, who doesn't know the Austrian Cultural Forum in, in Manhattan? Who does not know us? So I assume, uh, for those very briefly, we are one of around 30 cultural institutes run by the Austrian Foreign Ministry, by the Republic of Austria, all over the world, not in each country, obviously. Uh, but there's one here, which is the, we like to call ourselves the flagship Austrian cultural institute in the world. It's a great uh, architectural landmark building in Midtown Manhattan. Uh, do visit our gallery, come to our concerts if you haven't been there. Our main job is to present contemporary Austrian culture and arts to the New York and also U.S. audience. So. Our job is more to present the, the Mozarts and the Zweigs of tomorrow rather than those of, of, of yesterday. As I said, we do a lot of uh, music. We have up to three, four concerts per week in a very small, uh, nice audience, a, a nice, nice uh, chamber for ch chamber music in particular, uh, theater hall. We do a lot of contemporary music and we do three to four international group X exhibitions per year. Currently, uh, one entitled Vienna Complex that's coming down this week, and we are setting up another one that's opening on the 17th of June about selfies. So if you are interested in contemporary art, please come and visit us uh, as a gallery and as a concert hall. Having said that, uh, as we spend about 50% of our budget on concerts, 50% on visual arts, the rest goes into literature, theater, film, academic debates, et cetera, the, 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 the remaining rest. We're working on increasing that, on, on balancing that out. And one of the tools is the translation prize that uh, already was presented three times in the past, in 2009, 2010, and 2011. Damien was the recipient of the 2011 prize. Uh, it is always, it's always been a local initiative uh, by our office. It's nothing that we have to do. It's nothing that is worldwide in, in all countries. There are translation prizes run by the Austrian Ministry of Culture. Uh, I don't think any American translator has ever received that. So if there is any translators 
in the audience check out on that. I'm not going to talk about this. Uh, I'm going to talk about, and we are going to talk about the locally grown, locally uh, made translation prize of the Austrian Culture Forum. Um, of course, the at the macro level, we want to help more Austrian contemporary literature to be present and to, to be introduced in, in the US and in the English speaking world. Uh, we, we do that also together with other partners and offices like the Goethe Institute. Uh, our little booth is, is, is next uh, to one another. Uh, in festivals such as the Festival Neue Literatur, I'm sure you've heard about that, uh, or with other European culture institutes, the New Literature from Europe Festival. Uh, this year we participated in the Penn Festival. We had Josef Winkler here in New York a couple of weeks ago. We had Maya Haderlapp uh, from Austria here in, in February. And a new sort of relaunched tool and instrument to present uh, Austrian contemporary literature in, in the US is the translation prize. Uh, of course, at the micro level, and I think that's very important to stress, these $5,000 are an assistance, a, a very concrete assistance that should go to those who play a very important role in the process of, of bookmaking, and th that's the translators. Uh, we, we appreciate the role of the translators. We want to recognize that and we want to give them and, and you a very specific assistance in helping us to present uh, contemporary Austrian literature. And indirectly, it is also assistance to publishers. If there is any publishers in, in the room uh, where you're contemplating uh, bringing out uh, a book in, 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 uh, in English of an Austrian author, there is those $5,000 that might be helpful in, in this process. If you know of any uh, good, or not even good, excellent uh, translators that qualify, uh, please do motivate uh, to, to submit an application. The price itself, as I said, goes to the translator. Uh, the procedure is very simple, it's not very bureaucratic. Uh, we, we are launching it now to give you three months to submit a 10-page sample translation. We think that is doable without too much input from the side of the translator. Um, we will try to make the payment even this year or early next year, depending on the amount of applications we receive. Um, we um, will help the translator, if they are unable to do so by themselves, find a publisher targeting, of course, small, medium-sized publishers who can use the assistance uh, through the translator in the amount of, of $5,000. We have a, a jury of, of experts, of very reputable people, such as Damien Searles, who is on this year's jury, bringing in the expertise and experience as a translator. We have Professor Fatima Nakwi, we have publisher Michael Wise, those three representing the, the US side. Uh, we have um, Professor Daniela Striegel from Austria, and uh, most importantly, Dr. Rüdiger Wischenbart, who is also here in the audience and who kindly agreed to sit on this jury. Uh, also myself, uh, representing the Austrian Cultural Forum. Uh, the process will be simple, it will be quick, it will be transparent, and we hope to see more uh, Austrian contemporary literature published after 1945, uh, presented and translated into English. Uh, ideally, there will be a published book by the end of next year, and so we are shooting at a sort of two-year circle, 2014-15, uh, biennial prize, and then again 2016, 2017. It's a bit of an experience. It's a bit modified from the previous prize. Uh, we uh, experiment. Yeah, we 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 hope that we will receive enough applications. In the past, I think we would receive between 10 and 20 to keep this prize alive. Also in the future, I think I've spoken too much. Uh, I will now briefly introduce Damien. Damien is a translator from. 
German, but also from Norwegian, French, and Dutch. Uh, most recently, uh, translating Robert Walsa. We will talk about that maybe during the conversation. And uh, also Elfriede Jelinek's Her, Not All Her, for which Damien did receive in 2011 the then Austrian Cultural Forum's Translation Prize. Uh, Damien is from New York City. He studied at Harvard and Berkeley. He has translated many great writers, including from Austria. And I need to do a little promotion for Austria. I'm only mentioning the Austrian authors such as Ingeborg Bachmann, Peter Hanke, and, and Thomas Bernhard. Uh, he has received several awards and fellowships and is currently writing a history on the Rorschach test. I don't know how you pronounce always German names in English. I did Kippenberger already this, this, this morning. Uh, so Damien is wearing three hats, as you can see this morning, the hat of the translator, the author, and the jury member. And I have a couple of questions for him, starting with the Damien Searles, the translator, who did receive the ACFNY Translation Prize in, in 2011, uh, for uh, Elfriede Jelinek's Her, Not All Her. Damien, why, why Elfriede Jelinek and why an Austrian author? So in the in the earlier version of the translation prize, it it worked with me the way it's supposed to work. Um, it's it was a prize uh, with conditions. Uh, at the time, it wasn't exactly translated after uh, published after 1945. It was for books by living authors, and um, and uh, I tend to gravitate towards the dead authors. Um, most of the books that I uh, have translated are by um, by dead classic types, Hermann Hesse, Rainer Maria Rilke, I did a Proust book from French, things like that. So, um, but then I heard about this prize and sort of looked through my bookshelves to try and see if there was anyone uh, above ground that I wanted to translate. Um, and so, uh, Elfriede Jelinek, as you probably know, Nobel Prize winning Austrian writer. This is an extremely small book um, that's even smaller than it looks since every other page is a beautiful picture. Do you want to flip? Show. And so it's exactly the kind of book that, um, that it's hard to approach a publisher with. Say, hey, there's this great 3,000 word book and it's a sort of play except there are no lines and no characters and it's about this other writer named Robert Walser who's Swiss and also dead. So um, it, at the same time, uh, Elfriede Jelinek has a very specific reputation in the English speaking world that isn't entirely what she's like. She's known for these sort of shocking, often violent, often very dark novels She's not known for being a virtuoso who translated Thomas Pynchon's Gravity's Rainbow into German and who's very uh, involved with earlier writers in the tradition. So for me, uh, I wanted to do this Elfriede Jelinek to uh, sort of broaden her profile in the English speaking world and give Americans and English readers a sense of who she is beyond who they've already heard of. So she is classic, although not dead. Um, but this was a real chance uh, for me to present um, a different contemporary side of her. Thank you. Uh, speaking about um, Jelinek and, and Walsa, uh, Her Not All Her is a monodrama about Robert Walsa, right? And, and about his past decades in a mental institution. Uh, you're currently also translating Robert Walz, and you did something before. Uh, did you find Jelinek through Walzer or Walzer through, through Jelinek? Um, I mean, I knew about Jelinek. Uh, I, I was curious about her Walzer play because I like the work of Robert Walzer. Uh, this is an extremely weird book. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a play, but there are no characters or exactly lines. It's just this sort of voices and sometimes it's um, sometimes it's sort of him speaking or someone like him and sometimes it's about him. Um, 
the the title in German is uh, Er nicht Alzer, which sounds like Robert Walzer, um, which means he not as he. So that was kind of the dramatic uh, decision about how to translate it if you want to keep the fact that it's this fragmenting of Robert Walser's name, he not all he doesn't do that and also doesn't sound that great in English. So um, he not as he turned into her not all her, like Robert Walser uh, in English, and, uh, and made it a kind of nice um, nod to the translation as well, because it's her book, but it's not all her book, the same way she was saying it was him, but not all him that she was writing about. Uh, I, I guess Elfriede Jelinek was quite happy about this gender change from, from he to she, and that was years before Conchita Wurst, I don't know who in the audience is familiar with, with Conchita Wurst, the Austrian male drag queen turned into a bearded woman who won the European Song Contest this year. Um, but is that within the the freedom of a translator? Do you have to agree with, with the author on that, talking a bit, as, uh, with your second hat being also an author and the author-translator relationship, did you did you talk to Elfriede Jelinek during the translation process? Well, this is one of the big advantages uh, of working with dead authors. You don't really have to worry about that. Um, one, once I attain the status of a, of a dead author, my translators will just be able to do whatever they want. Um, but actually, uh, I'm on the side of, of believing that a translator, if a translator is good, you have to give them the freedom to do what needs to be done to convey it in the language they're translating into. If they're bad, then there's sort of no micromanaging you can do that'll really help anyway. So either way, uh, it's best to sort of trust the translator and, and let them do what they think needs to be done. Maybe I'm saying that more as a translator than as an author, but um, the the living authors that I have worked with tend to be translators themselves and tend to trust that part of the process. Um, Jan Fossa is a Norwegian author who's also a translator. Alfredi Jelinek herself is also a translator. And so they understand that, um, that giving the translator that kind of freedom um, is something you have to do to g give the translator room to convey what the work really is. Um, I didn't talk to her personally. I had some emails relayed over to her and and she was fine with the with the choice and, and liked it and things like that. Thank you. I'm, I would be very tempted to ask you more questions as, as both a translator and an author, but let me uh, round up, and, and I'm getting the signal that, that we're running out of time, with uh, one or two questions uh, to you as, as jury member. And, and as I said before, Damien uh, kindly agreed to sit on the jury. He has been the, the most uh, recent uh, recipient of the Austrian Cultural Forum Translation Award. Uh, we are happy to have this experience in the jury. Uh, how do you think, Damien, will it influence the decision-making process in the jury, having a translator on, on board? Uh, well, it, um, of course, I haven't been on it yet, and I wasn't on it before, so I, I'm not totally sure. But, uh, but I think that um, the translators are very sensitive to how translations are. Uh, I can judge the quality of a translation, even if I don't know the original text or the original language, because I know the kinds of problems that happen in a translation process. If, if something is deformed out of English, you can tell if it's an artistic thing that the author's doing or a uh, problematic thing that the translator is doing, um, if you have some experience with the translation process. so. Uh, I, I'm quite happy to be on the jury for this prize because, as I said before, uh, for me, it was uh, it was very helpful as a translator. It sort of did its job. It got me to focus on a different kind of literature for me. And then um, the publisher, the future publisher of the book, heard about it from the, the Austrian Cultural Forum and contacted me. Um, the book itself turned out very artistically and beautifully 
Um, in fact, there's something called the Best Translated Book Award, um, and there's 25 books on the, the long list each year, and then finalists and a winner. And this strange artifact turned out to be one of the best translated book long lists this year. So um, it, it really seems to me to be a very, uh, as Christian said, um, direct conduit f to help translators produce the kinds of uh, contemporary Austrian books that will then reach an audience. So, so I'm looking forward to, to seeing what there is. Um, I think that as a translator, my main job is, is to read well and to sort of tap into what the author's doing and then try and convey it. So, um, so I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the new voices that are gonna come in this year. Thank you so much. Uh, again, if you're a translator, it's, it's on our website now. There's a little flyer with some typers, we have to admit. We did it in a rush, but we wanted to give you, the translators, more time to work over the summer on the 10 pages uh, sample translations and to send us your, our, your applications by the 1st of September. As I said, we hope to, to be able to, to have a winner by the end of this year. Uh, if you have any other questions on, on our office, on our work, go to acfny.com or visit us on, on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or see Susanne, our librarian, who is uh, sitting in front of our booth uh, in the course of today or, or tomorrow, or you can also approach me right afterwards. Thank you again to Damien and thank you everybody for, for joining us this morning. <laughs>